Okay. Even in the natural, we can see God. If we look to the things that are wrong with the natural. You know what? When I uh, dream, when I have a dream, I dream of myself as being young. I don't dream as myself of myself as being old. Um, I have dreamed of other people being old, but I have never dreamed about myself and being old in that dream. I'm always young. Sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm really young. I'm like in my early, early teens, like 11, 12 years old again, you know. So, and that's what I want to point out to you today. I want to, I want to show biblically where this started, where it, where it all came from. And to do that, you go back to the book of Genesis, verse uh, chapter 2, down about verse 15 or so. And we'll read just a little bit of it, where God had planted the tree, and he told Adam and Eve, he says, if you eat of this tree, um, you will um, surely die. And the day that you eat of this tree, you'll surely die. So, and I want to try to find a link on here to show you that um, there is scientific proof that um, we should, our body should not get old. You should not grow, you should not have gray hair. You should not uh, get wrinkles. Your skin should lose its elast elasticity ability. <laughs> it shouldn't do that, but your our body should not get old because every seven years your body replenishes itself. It takes about seven years for your body to replenish itself. And if you looked closely at that, you would find that more likely it's probably about 6.6 .6 because, because that is the biblical definition of the natural. And this is how we're going to know the Antichrist because he's going to be so related to the natural. He is going to fit that 666 so easily and so completely. And he will... The Antichrist will be everything to your natural body as Jesus is to your spirit. He's going to, he is going to, it's like the, it's like he, this person is going to complete you in the natural. Just like God completes you in the spirit. Okay? So this is one way that we're going to know about the natural and that the natural is, is messed up. So, so it might it might be actually it should be like one degree off maybe six point six seven six that's probably a real close estimate of how long it takes for your body to regenerate itself because because of that of that curse that thing that where they eat of the ate of that fruit see in the beginning man were created to live forever this is why it's not in our natural conscience mind to ever die. I remember telling my daughter about uh, all men die when she was young. I don't know, she was like 12 or 13 or something. And we were talking about it. She just never realized that, you know. And she's like, you know, I can see her getting it all of a sudden. Like, oh, and she's like, but but that that's a long time off. I go, yeah, yeah. And, you know, people have accidents and die and stuff like that. but. Yeah, normally it's a long time off. But, you know, and I remember when she, when she turned 30, she cried because I knew, you know, she, uh, people shouldn't, you know, that's uh, uh, something else right there when we realize that we're getting old and drawing closer. Getting old wouldn't bother you if you didn't have to die afterward, you know, <laughs> in that. And, of course, that's why people get upset as they're getting older. They don't, they don't realize that. God has us, our backs in this. God has our backs in getting old. You know what I'm saying? God has our backs in getting old. I'm, let me write that down. I need to write down stuff before, uh, but I don't ever think of it. Tell you the truth, man, all this is just coming right out of my heart and right out of God's Word. <clears throat> our 
backs and getting on. I have to write really fast. But people don't, it's not a natural thing. You know, I've, I've had conversations with atheists and sometimes I'll ask them, I'll say, does it seem right to you that we should have to die? What have you done to deserve death? You know, in our natural conscious mind, we we don't think of ourselves as doing anything wrong. Our flesh will wonder after stuff. The the Bible says the, the, the flesh carries the death with it. It has um it has uh, a a desire to move away from life itself. <laughs> and the Bible says it's God's enemy. So that's the thing that um, is that is pulling us steadily toward that's at 676 instead of 666 it's that 676 thing that draws us steadily toward you know it's just a just a shade off and scientists tell us that what happens when we get old is that our after a certain time about 33 I think years of age that our DNA the, the like the tips of our DNA something about the tips of our DNA begin to break off and that's what causes us to get old and that's what happened when Adam and Eve ate that fruit the curse came along the Bible tells us that all sicknesses disease uh, were it was I'm not sure the right word to use here my southern vernacular is what Thompson says but <laughs> wasn't it was wrapped up in that fruit everything everything the consequence of sin the, the knowledge of good and evil in the fruit that Adam and Eve ate was called the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. So, unless there is, and, and, it, and it carried the consequence. What happened was, the Bible says, briars began to come forth out of the ground. Um, with, see, it didn't just mess up our DNA, but it messed up the DNA of the ground. That from that fruit, it was that tree that they ate. Uh, went into their bodies and it and it came out on the ground um, after they had went to the bathroom it came out on the ground and it began to grow up briar and thistles from around and it just spread from there you know I mean how smart would it have been for them to just gather up all of their poop in that day pardon my language but <laughs> and just keep it in a big pit somewhere you know but then again, you know, hey, once water gets on it, it goes everywhere anyhow. So I guess we were just doomed from that point on. You, you just, there's no way to, to outsmart God. You know, yeah. you'd have to took Adam and Eve and shot them into outer space because once that fruit had got out onto the ground, man, hey, there was just no turning back. So in that day, and, we, and this is what we do. We see, we think of those things that um, that don't seem natural to us. It's, I know that it's wrong for my children, little innocent baby. That's one thing the atheists keep telling me. Why does a baby get sick? Well, because of sin. Because that sin came out on the ground and cursed man. This is a cursed earth. They, they keep thinking that we're supposed to live on a perfect earth. But I hear people say all the time, in a perfect world, it would be this way. Well, it's not perfect. This is a cursed world. We're living in a cursed world. One of the greatest preachers that's on television just went through a battle of throat cancer. And they, they're using the accusations against him because he got sick. Well, he got sick because there was a battle coming his way and through the natural. He's not, just because you're a preacher, folks, you're not exempt to the battles of this world. I'm going through one right now myself and have been going through one for the past couple of years. Um, and and I'm, I'm praying and you know I'm seeking God and in the honesty of my heart and God is leading me to do things that's helping me get over this but he is not just so far he has not just taken me out of the battle man I have to go through this battle okay and uh, but he isn't God has not forsaken me in this battle Listen, I believe there's a time coming along where God is going to wrestle this thing to the ground on my behalf. He's going to step in front of me and fight my battles for me. 
As a matter of fact, the Bible says, when you hold your peace, it says, you shall, it says, the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. That's what it says. You don't have to hold your peace first. That's not what it says. The Bible says that there is a time coming when um, God will fight our battles for you. Just, and if you'll just hang on just a half a second, I will look that up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here it is. Exodus 14:14 14, 14 is where it says it. And literally, um, if you go down to the King James version. This is the way that it says it. Okay. Um, it said, the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Just like I said, the Lord shall fight for you. And this this is in God's personality to do this. And uh, this was in a time when, um, let me read a little bit more of this to you, okay? Because I just want you to get to this. This is um, in the time of the deliverance of Israel. And um, God was giving instruction, you know, and they had been through a hard time. And uh, it's it's when they were standing on the shore, you know, and um, uh, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were the children were, were uh, afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And they said, Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, thou hast taken us to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth this, uh, out of Egypt? It's not, is it not just the word that did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it has been better for us um, to serve the Egyptians than we should die here. In the, some, you know, a lot of times we just want to like give in. We just want to give in. But if we stay with it, if we stay with it, listen to what Moses said. Moses said to the people, fear you not. Man, God has our back in this. God has our back in this. Fear you not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. <laughs> this is what God wants us to see in every battle. Yes, it's bad. Yes, this is cursed. Yes, we are, we are, we are slowly, steadily marching toward death unless God intervenes. But the thing that God wants us to know is that He is going to intervene. Happy is the man whose mind is stayed on the Lord. Listen to what I'm telling you now. Moses said to them, Fear not, stand still. Stand still, calm your heart. <laughs> One of the greatest counsels God has ever given me is, Calm down, son, I've got this, you know. <laughs> I mean, the Lord didn't say calm down, son, but he was saying, calm your heart. I've got this. He says, and see the salvation of the Lord, Moses tells them, which he will show to you today. Today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. <laughs> and they didn't. They didn't. Egypt has never given Israel trouble straight out. Unto this day, he, they never have. It says, And the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Okay. And yeah, there was a time, I think, when Egypt joined in with somebody else, but not just on their own. Okay. Not, ne nothing like they did in that day. Nothing like they did in that day. <clears throat> and God did fight, and he holds true to his, bat his word. Amen. I already thank you for joining me. We'll see you next time. Another great message right here, Crossing the Middle Ministry.